What is going on, everybody? Welcome to the Kansas City Royals franchise here in MLB The Show 21. You might be asking yourself, Goldie, why the heck are you starting a franchise series in July? Well, guys, I spent a lot of time with the GGBL, and it's just not doing anything. I thought that that league was going to be really, really fun for a lot of people, and it's apparently just not doing anything. So I got to do what I got to do, and I'm still going to upload it. I'm still going to upload GGBL once a week, but... I think the major focus point for a lot of good content on YouTube is that people want to watch the user. They want to watch gameplay. They want to watch somebody take a team, one team, and follow along with that one team and build it to success. And that's what we're going to do with the Royals. It's time to just get back to your roots, which is one team franchise modes. And we're going to start that here with the Kansas City Royals. So guys, before I talk about the roster, I want to bring into attention that we are accepting custom prospects in this series, just like we do with every other one. And as you guys know, in MLB The Show, you can't actually edit any of these players until they're drafted and until they're signed and until you get to the off season, then you can rename them. So once we draft our players, you can actually go in and you can edit their name, their position, you can edit their motions, their equipment, their attributes. I can do all that after I get you guys to submit your prospects. So if you guys want to be a part of this series randomly and you want to be randomly chosen, fill out the submission form in the pinned comment and in the description of this video. You'll find the link. It's easily, it's easy to find. It's a Google form. Just follow the instructions, answer the questions and you'll be submitted. It's not gonna guarantee that everybody gets in, okay? So I just wanna make that sure that that is noted. I'm gonna have another open submission form in year number two, year number three, year number four. You might never get one. That's just the way that it goes. It's all random. If you want to guarantee that your custom prospects get into the series, make sure you guys are going to patreon.com my link and my Patreon page is in the description and the pinned comment below. You guys can guarantee that you get a prospect into every single season. As long as you remain a patron in every single season, you will get a custom prospect guaranteed. Now, depending on what the donation amount is per month, whether it's 3, 5, 10, or 20, that's going to be dependent on your rating and your player's potential. You can submit your prospect through random submission if you guys want to go that route, or you can guarantee that you get in if you just donate $3 a month, $5 a month, $10 or $20, and that'll be dependent on what your ranking is and your overall rating is as well. So let's talk a little bit more about the roster, guys. Let's look at the lineup here real quick. We got Mondesi leading us off. We got Benintendi batting second, Merrifield third, Perez, Soler, Dozier, in the heart of the order. Santana, you could probably mix and match Dozier and Santana. I feel like the switch hitter spot, right? You break up the righties, you got one, two, three righties in a row. Get the switchy in there, and then you end it off with the righties. Either way, I'll leave it there for now. I think ultimately though, I would want Santana to get up there and get a little bit more at bats behind Solaire, but we'll see how that, that goes. Ryan McBroom at DH, Michael Taylor in center field, Alberto, Lopez, Gallagher, Dyson on the bench. So the thing I like about the Royals roster right now, as I mentioned, is the young pitching staff. I would think that we're probably going to get rid of Danny Duffy or Mike Miner at the deadline. You don't necessarily need to get rid of them. If you want to hold on to them for another season, you could theoretically do that. I think that that would be acceptable. But if we're just bad, if we're just flat out trash this season, I think you have to do it. I think you got to get rid of those old guys and get them out of that starting rotation. That way you can get these guys, your top 50s, in there and get that progression going. Relief pitching wise, we're a little bit on the older scale. We got to get a little bit younger here. Josh Stalmont, I think I want to keep him. If we end up finding a better closer, we might be able to move Stalmont to set up, which is something that I'd consider. Uh, Salvador Perez, I don't want him going anywhere. I think he's going to be a mainstay for this lineup. We'll see what his overall rating does, his regression. If he hits regression like really hard, like Miguel Cabrera-esque regression in this game, you might have to consider moving on from him. 
but for now, he's an 86 at 30 years old. I think we got a few more seasons out of Perez. I don't have any intentions of trading him. I really want Melendez and Valoria to challenge Perez for that starting job, like maybe in year five, year six. Once Salvi gets to 35, 36, I feel like we might be able to swing that. These guys will be 27, 24. Hopefully they're, they're uh, challenging him for that starting catching job. First base and third base. This is a this is these are two positions that I want to focus on building through the draft, maybe free agency at some points because I don't feel like what we have here is going to be game changing. It's not franchise changing. Santana probably a trade piece. McBroom, O'Hearn, Prado. You know you're hoping that Prado progresses better than that C potential, right? You're hoping for that. But Ryan O'Hearn and McBroom, the guys that are really able to make an impact for this team in the now i don't know if they're game changing i really don't 27 70 b i just don't see that i just don't see it hunter dozier 29 75 b hans alberto 28 72 c i don't see these guys like being franchise changers you got mondesi you got bobby witt you know, in middle infield, it looks like it's going to be pretty solid for us in the future, right? But it's the corners that have me a little bit concerned. Left field, center field, right field. I like the way the lineup is right now. But in the future, I don't, again, I don't see how this is going to get us over the top. I feel like the left field spot needs to be fixed. Maybe we get a little bit more out of Benintendi. He has not been the same player, you know, for... Uh, for a while, actually. So 2018, he hit 290. Then in Boston, 2019, 266, and uh, just wasn't just wasn't the same in 2020. Obviously, 2020 happened, and it was just a terrible year all the way around. But you know, Benintendi has been really good for the first three years. 290, 271, like hitting a bunch of home runs. Like he looked like he was just a really he was really living up to the hype. And Kansas City's hoping that he can do that here in 2021. Michael Taylor, good defense, good defensive player, stats. He's gonna give you some good years, some bad years. He's just very inconsistent, but he's a good defensive player. Center field that I'm okay with, but I feel like, again, we could do a little bit better. Solaire with the power. <sighs> Solaire's tough. It's like, do you get rid of him? Do you move on? You got Matias here coming up 63b 21 years old it's a tough call it's a tough call maybe i feel like we could get a little something for Solaire if we decided to move on from him but yeah outfield needs a little bit of work i feel like we need a little bit more youth i feel like we need some more spark out there in the outfield get like another game changing type of player a franchise changer out there and i think that we would be okay upload schedule i feel like we can get this thing to about two to three times a week three times a week is going to be hard but i feel like ggbl with once a week xba once a week and this series two times a week i feel like that would be a nice stretch of uploads on the channel so guys let's get into some gameplay here and um going to opening day we got brady singer against kyle gibson i'll show a few games in next episode from May, June, maybe July. I want to get to July, and then we'll slow it down a little bit. We'll see where we're at. We'll get to the deadline. We'll talk about what to do there. I want you guys involved in the trades. We'll get into August, September, October, and then before you know it, we'll be either in the playoffs or we'll be looking at the offseason and, and the moves that we want to make. So let's get into some gameplay, guys. Let's get into opening day. Opening day action against the Texas Rangers, the team that I'm familiar with. Took over them back in MLB The Show 19 and 20. It was a fun series. If you haven't checked that out yet, go check it out. It was a good one. It's old, but it's good. Royals pitching staff. This is this is really surprising to me. They were middle of the pack across Major League Baseball last season. And in the American League, they were in the top 10 in all categories that we just saw up there on the screen. So actually... Really looking forward to this pitching staff. See what we can do in 2021. Hopefully we take the next step. But whenever you get good defense like this, Andrew Benintendi must have lost it in the sun, but he makes the play anyway. Good out, number one. Next batter, Brock Holt. Going to send a base hit up the middle. Michael Taylor cuts it off, fires into second base. Not going to be in time. That's going to be a Brock Holt double with one down. 
Next batter up is Willie Calhoun, 0-1 count. He sends a long fly ball out there deep to center field. If it's got any carry, it could be gone. But Michael Taylor makes the play at the warning track. Brock Holt is going to tag up from second and get into third base. So we've got a dangerous situation here with Joey Gallo up 3-2 count. He's going to lift the fly ball out to center field. But Michael Taylor rounds it off and makes the easy routine play in center. And Brady Singer gets out of a mini jam. Mondesi's going to line drive this thing right to Adolis Garcia. Makes the play for the first out in the bottom of the first inning. Andrew Benintendi comes on up, gets a line shot. That's a perfect, perfect. Adolis Garcia cuts it off. Could have been a double had he not gotten over there. That was, uh, that was a pretty hot shot there by Benintendi. Now next batter up the number three hitter, Whit Merrifield. Going to line drive back up the middle. And Benintendi going to slide in safely to third. Garcia's throw not in time. So good aggressive base running here by the Kansas City Royals, utilizing some of their speed on the base pads. Runners on the corners with one down, and Salvi Perez could do some damage here, but he's going to fly out to Joey Gallo, who's got a really strong arm. He's got a cannon out there in right field. Now, had that throw been a little bit more online, he probably would have gunned Benintendi. But either way, it's one nothing Kansas City. And Brady Singer goes back out in the top of the second to do some work. And by work, I mean these athletic plays. PFP all the way around for Brady Singer. Next batter, David Dahl. He's going to strike out. That's the first one for Brady Singer on the day and on the campaign. Next batter up, little chopper to third. Hunter Dozier makes the athletic play on the run. Man, this Royals defense is coming through big time so far in the first two innings. Let's go to the bottom of the second. We got Hunter Dozier coming up and this one's a line drive over Garcia's head and over the wall. That's the first home run of the Royals season and for Hunter Dozier. Man, he must have heard that I was talking crap about him back in the intro part of this video, man. I was Kind of ripping the third base position in first base. We needed to fix this up, and uh, he's making me pay for that. So I hope I get production out of Hunter Dozier. I really do, because that would be a bright spot in this lineup. Take a look at the double play ball here. Hunter Dozier back to second. Merrifield flips the first to Santana, and the Royals again. Good defense and good pitching here so far through three innings. Bottom of the third, Benintendi already one for one against Gibson. Let's see what he's got here. A little curveball, a little slider piece, a little breaking ball. Going to send it on the pull side as a lefty. That's the right to right field. And he's going to get a base knock again. So Benintendi two for two. Whit Merrifield also two for two. But it looks like it's the same situation here. Merrifield gets another base hit up the middle. Garcia, we challenge him. We get Benintendi over to third. This time, Salvi comes up, and he's going to fly out to left field. David Dahl is going to fire it to home. Hits the cutoff, but it's just too late, and Salvador Perez gets a, another RBI sack fly. So it is three to nothing, and now Gibson is feeling the pressure a little bit. Two outs. Jorge Soler gets the walk, and now Hunter Dozier, who hit that solo home run, is going to ground out. That's a, probably a pretty good mound visit there against a guy that uh, just hit a home run off you so really good job by texas his coaching staff to get out there and talk to their man jorge soler making a great play look at remember we were just talking about this royals defense man this has been nuts the outfield's been playing good the infield's been playing good pitching's been great 99 percent route efficiency for jorge soler he's gonna get the big time out there and now this time wow what a play Michael Taylor in center field. I wonder what the route efficiency here was. I mean, look at this. Oh, that's a great play in, deep, in the deepest part of the field. 99.6, almost 100% all the way out there to center field. So Brady Singer pitching well, and then, uh-oh. After two great defensive plays in the outfield, we give up a solo home run to Joey Gallo. You knew it was going to happen, right? Gallo's going to get his. It's Joey Gallo. The guy's a beast. So Brady Singer gives up the solo home run. Joey Gallo makes him pay for it. Just a little changeup that missed over the heart of the plate. And then we get Nate Lowe. Nate Lowe comes up, and he hits a solo home run. The very next batter. Texas goes back-to-back, -back and Brady Singer, man, you, you got to shake it off there, kid. You got to shake it off a little bit. It's still a 3-2 game. We still got the lead. You can get this easy out. 
That's probably what they're talking about here in the mound visit. Just trying to make sure he's okay. Energy level's good. Confidence is good. Just keep firing, man. Just keep firing. Just keep doing your thing. Let the defense help you out. Santana tags the bag. We go to the bottom of the fourth inning. We're going to need those runs back. Ryan McBroom going to strike out against Gibson. Next batter, Michael Taylor. He's going to lift the little fly ball here, and it's going to fall right in between center field and second base, but Taylor goes and tries to be super aggressive, and he gets caught at second base. Ugh, it's frustrating. But Singer comes out, strikes out Isaiah kiner falefa We're going to get out of the fifth inning. Let's go to the top of the sixth. we got Brock Holt up. And the speedy Brock Holt is no match for the athletic Brady Singer. Look at that play. Another situation for PFP for Singer. Good defense all the way around here still for the Royals. Salvador Perez, little pop-up in foul territory, makes the play. Now Joey Gallo. Ooh, that was risky. It was a little risky throw there. Gallo loves those pitches inside and low, but he's going to strike out anyway. And speaking of good defense, look at this play. Wow, what a play there for Texas to get another out in this inning. We're in the bottom of the sixth, and look at Hunter Dozier. He's going to send a long fly ball to deep center field. That's right center field. It's going to fall and then hop over the fence for a ground rule double. Man, he is swinging a hot stick. Keep it going there, Hunter Dozier. Chris Woodward is going to intentionally walk Carlos Santana here, the lefty. And they're going to put two runners on. For the lefty, Kobe Allard. So Kyle Gibson's day is done, and probably not the way that he wanted to exit. He could have had a quality start under his belt had he gotten just one more out. But against the righty, lefty-righty matchup. We like this matchup. Ryan McBroom going deep, but not deep enough to do any damage. Dang it. We could have really blown this thing open. But Adolis Garcia makes the nice play. Let's go to the top of the seventh inning, and we've still got Brady Singer out there. We've still got the youngster pitching and pitching well, but it's kind of getting a little dicey situation here. 0-2 count. Singer fires it high and inside, and that's going to be another K on David Dahl. That's Singer's fifth. Two strikeouts for David Dahl on the day. Adolis Garcia, fly ball, left field. That's going to be easily caught by Andrew Benintendi. We got two down in the top of the seventh, guys. So we have a crucial at-bat here for Nick Solak. Can we get him out? It's going to be a ground ball to Mondesi. He's going to flip it over to first base in time. And Santana makes the nice play there, too. And the Royals are still holding on to the lead. Three to two. Allard's going to strike out Michael Taylor. One down. Mondesi with the bunt, the running bunt. He's going to try to get to first. He's going to beat Colby Allard. Oof, the speed of Adalberto Mondesi. Nice job there. Next batter up, Ben Benintendi. He's going to strike out on a cut fastball. Man, he, he's been hot all day long. That We really needed another base knock there from Ben Benintendi, but he can't get it done. Whit Merrifield has been on all day. He's going to send another ball right back up the middle. And Mondesi's going to go from first to third. He was stealing on the play. It's a little hit and run action there for the Royals. And now we've got something cooking here to get a little insurance run. Here's Salvador Perez. Got two sack flies already today. And he's going to lift this one to right fielder. Joey Gallo camps underneath it, makes the play. And we're out of the seventh. That's frustrating because we could have really opened this game up had we just gotten a couple knocks. Brady Singer's already got one down here in the top of the eighth. And Isaiah kiner Falefa. Gets a single right in front of Whit Merrifield. Had a good effort on the play, but either way, it's a single for Kiner Falefa. They will pinch run for him. Eli White checks in. And now we've got a situation with Brock Holt, Calhoun, and Joey Gallo. All lefties. Do we bring in Daniel Lynch? No. We are going with Brady Singer. He's our ace. He's our young guy. You got to trust him in this situation here. Opening day, the fans are all going to be behind us. Let's get this done. We need a double play ball here against Holt. We need it really badly. You don't want to face Calhoun or Gallo in these types of situations. So one down, 1-1 one, one count here. Singer, got to pay attention to the runner on first as well. Got some speed there, Eli White, in the 90s there. You got to watch out for him. So 2-1 count. Let's check the runner here real quick. Let's see what we can do. 
See if he's got a big enough lead. No, we go with a slide step here, but the slider is going to miss as well. And Mike Matheny is thinking, did I make the wrong call? 3-1 count. We got the good. We got the perfect timing. That's a ground ball to short. Back to second. Flip over to first. That's a double play. And we are out of the eighth inning. Mondesi to Merrifield to Santana. And Brady Singer does a job. Wow. So we need some insurance now in the bottom of the eighth inning. We got to get something cooking here. And Santana is going to send a line drive back up the middle. We've been really liking that spot right in front of Adolis Garcia. Ryan McBroom comes up. Little ground ball here. Back up the middle again. Again, we love hitting right there. We love hitting up the middle. At least that's what we've done all day today. Joely Rodriguez is going to check in for Kobe Allard. It's clutch time right here. Michael Taylor, fly ball to right field. Again, we got Salvador Perez flying to right with runners on. We got Michael Taylor flying to right with runners on. And now it's up to Brady Singer going up against the lefties, Willie Calhoun and Joey Gallo. But a base hit for Willie Calhoun. We fire back to first. We could have got him if Santana was just sitting there at first, man. Ah, play the bag in that situation. Dang it. And that's going to end it for Brady Singer. So we are going to go check in with Daniel Lynch here with nobody down. It's a 3-0 count, and Gallo is swinging. He's swinging on 3-0. A little flip here to second. Merrifield, the exchange was a little bit slow, and Gallo is going to get to first safely. Delino DeShields Jr. will check in. So now we've got a situation lefty on lefty here. Nate Lowe. And DeShields gets on base, so they avoid getting into the double play situation. It's 2-0 count on Nate Lowe, lefty on lefty. We get a ground ball. Merrifield got to make this play. He does. Two down, top of the ninth. We need one more out. Opening day win, possibly. Can we get it? Ooh, we'll have to wait another pitch here. 0-2 count. David Dahl, lefty on lefty. Lynch, fly ball. Ben Benintendi coming on in, camps underneath it, makes the play, and the Royals will be 1-0 in the early going of the season. That's a nice win. That's a really nice win. Brady Singer pitched marvelously, got through eight innings, tried to get to the top of the ninth, tried to finish it out, tried to close it out, but that first base hit, we knew that, okay, it's just, it's just time. you got to make the switch. you got to make the switch. Daniel Lynch had a lot of lefties coming up there. And he got it done. So good win by the Royals. Some timely hitting. Some really good defense all the way around. That one in particular, that play with Merrifield and Mondesi making the nice double play team up there. So good job by Kansas City. And we'll end up simulating the month of April. And I'll let you guys know how we did and where we're sitting and where we stand. I'll give you a little stats update too. Some player performances and things of that nature. And then uh, we will move on to next episode later on this week, which will be episode two. We'll have some gameplay in May. And uh, we'll go into June as well. So we'll also get a little minor league update in episode three, so on and so forth. So I, I, I really like the pace that we're going here. I want, Like I said, I want to get to July with this series uh, very quickly. That way we can really start talking about playoffs. We can start talking about trades things of that nature you guys saw our record right there we are 11 and 14 right now production wise with hitting it's i wish it was just a little bit better jorge soler has been our power guy uh santana's got five for 15 uh ryan mcbroom not doing too much either uh, that's kind of disappointing as well but salvador perez really got to get it going guys he's hitting in the 180s i believe 180s 190s it's not good uh for catcher especially as a number four hitter merrifield's doing well other guys at the top of the order are doing just fine. It's just that run production spot. we really got to figure that out. Pitching staff, you know, it's a limited sample sample size right now with the first month of the year. But so far, uh, Bubich has not been good. And it's something I want to keep my eye on as we move forward. But this was an interesting little dynamic here. Remember, in the beginning of this episode, I talked about how Stalmont might move to set up and we might move somebody else that's better suited for closer i didn't do this so this was all cpu this is all cpu done so let's take a look at the standings you guys saw where we were at we were actually in third place in the al central and we're not really 
that far back. Four games back in the wild card in the first month of the season. So that's, I like the position that we're in. As long as we can do that in this next month, if we can do it in May, if we can keep pace, we might be able to make a move here somewhere and try to uh, make a push. Now, not saying that in real life, Kansas City is capable of making the playoffs, but you know, in this sim, you gotta do what you gotta do given the situation that you're in. So guys, leave a like if you like this thing. That is going to do it for this episode. I will see you guys later on this week for episode number two and episode number three. Like I said, we're going to move really fast through this series and then get into the offseason, get into the playoffs, maybe. But I really want to start talking about trade deadline. I want to start talking about trade talks and moves that we could possibly make uh, to better the team for the now and the future. So guys, leave a like if you like this thing. I will see you later on this week. As always... Thank you for watching and peace.